We all know Reforger can be an absolutely stunning game. However, that comes with the cost of being a bit of a slog to run sometimes. Today, we're going to run through all the settings that are configurable on PC, showing what differences they have visually and on your performance. For the most part, I will be going through the graphics lists from top to bottom, so if you're doing your settings alongside this video, I'll do my best not to be jumping around the list. Now, I know on console, you guys don't have all of these options, you just have presets. And for you guys, from what I've seen around, you're best off running the performance preset if you're having issues with your frame rate. If this video helped you and you enjoyed, please let me know in the comments below. Let's jump in. All right, first up, we've got the render scale slider, which is essentially a slider to adjust your resolution on the on the fly uh, without actually changing anything on your monitor settings or anything like that. Essentially, the lower you go, the more blurry the image looks. This is all the way down 20%. It obviously looks absolutely horrible. Um, and the higher you go, the higher the resolution goes, so the better the quality gets, but the worse your frames, all right? So if you want a little bit of uh, easy frames, dead easy frames just slide it down a little bit but there is a setting underneath called the, the fidelity fx super resolution if you're going to go below 100 percent make sure you tick this the difference between it being off and on is like night and day so the blurry the blurriness from going below 100 percent um can be somewhat redeemed with the fidelity fx setting so if you get like i said if you go below 100 percent make sure you turn that setting off because it can almost you know negate the difference if you go 90 percent Next up, we have draw distance, and this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, it is the the range at which things will be rendered. All right, so the lowest you can go is 500 meters, uh, which yeah, anything beyond 500 meters will no longer be rendered, and it goes all the way up to 5,000. Uh, and as you as you increase it, that yeah, just shows the amount that's rendered. Personally, I like having mine up around like 4,000, just because uh, I like seeing what's in the diff distance. If I'm navigating around the map, or if I'm planning to do like supply runs, and I'm trying to like pick a route or something like that, I like seeing off in the distance. It does come with a bit of an FPS hit, so if you are really struggling for frames, obviously just you can just decrease it down to uh, to whatever suits you. Um, yeah, I, I personally I have mine around four thousand. Now this is one of the only settings that I've pulled from lower down on the list. This is the object distance, just because it pairs pretty much together with draw distance. Uh, the object distance changes at which the objects, buildings, trees, um, you know, anything on the roadside objects, it changes the distance at which those get rendered so low is very short and then yeah as you go up it increases the distance um that things are rendered so of course if you're using a very low render distance there's no point in having your obje your object distance being higher than it needs to be so just scale this down to what you have your re render distance to Now, foliage distance, essentially the same thing, but with just the foliage in mind. Uh, putting it to 50 meters, of course, only renders foliage. Um, the bushes and trees, of course, they still stay uh, intact. It's more just the grass uh, in, in fields and stuff, and it's especially noticeable with the wheat fields like this. So the lowest you can go is 50 meters. I do think that consoles are locked to like 100 meters, 150 meters, and... I really think they need to remove the ability to put it lower than the consoles on the PC. And the exact same with this setting. This is the foliage quality setting. Uh, and this changes the density of that foliage and, and the quality of it. it it's, it's, like, it's really noticeable at the lowest. Again, I think consoles are locked to like a low to medium setting. So I really think uh, PC users shouldn't get the ability to turn it lower because it is a distinct advantage compared to the higher settings. And these are the settings I like to run. Uh, I like to have my foliage setting on either medium or high, depending on if I want the frame rates or the uh, or the quality. And I usually have the render distance on around 150 to 200 meters. I like the like obviously you get a distinct advantage having it lower, but this I I prefer it to look good. Next up, we have 2D scopes. And uh, what this does essentially is it disables the picture-in-picture -picture rendering, and it does that by completely getting rid of the outer rendering of the scope and it makes it feel like a like an old nintendo like the old james bond nintendo games or something like that uh, even like the older call of duty games where it just doesn't render anything else on the outside uh, this does come with a little bit of an fps boost whilst you're aiming down scope however i cannot recommend it 
in the slightest even if you're on console even if you're on a really bad pc i cannot recommend it because of the eye relief so when you're moving around it is absolutely horrible so you can see here if moving around strafing around hitting a target you can see a little bit of shadowing appearing on the side of the scopes uh, if you're leaning crouching moving around uh, shooting anything like that it's you get a little bit however when you go into 2d mode it is unusable it is unusable to move to lean to do anything whilst uh, whilst aiming down sight so i cannot recommend the 2d scopes at all So now we've got post-processing anti-aliasing. And um, what anti-aliasing does is it softens the edges in a, in a scene. So any any rough edges, any uh, any sharp edges, it will soften them. So it makes it look a little bit uh, a little bit softer and cleaner. You mainly notice this with like railings and staircases and fences. Any edges, you'll see it like shimmering on the lower settings. So you can see the difference here between the uh, FXAA settings and the SMAA settings. Personally, the FXAA settings induce a little bit too much blur for my taste, so I like to run on the SMAA low setting, but a personal preference. It's also worth noting that I play on a 1440p monitor, and I find anti-aliasing is less needed compared to when I was running on 1080p. Near depth of field basically blurs the uh, the rear iron sight and the carry handle, uh, but this actually costs frames. I think it looks worse on both settings, the simple and the bokeh, and it costs quite a lot, of, like quite a bit of FPS. So I like the look of it off, and it gives me extra frames. So no brainer for me. Ambient occlusion next, and um, what this does is it adds shadows to things that aren't in direct sunlight. So as you can see, all the objects here that are in this room, uh, the cupboards, the chairs. You'll see shadows get added by the ambient occlusion. The main difference I see is from the medium to high setting. That's where it makes uh, somewhat of a visual difference. But again, for me, this doesn't make big enough of a difference for me to warrant the FPS lost. So I run this on the lowest setting available. And here we've got screen space reflections. Uh, this is essentially uh, a rendering technique for making reflections of objects more detailed on shiny surfaces and water. It does this without having to render the render the objects a second time. And this actually looks quite nice on the higher settings, but I do run it off because it's not that noticeable and the water and armor looks fantastic anyway. There's some games I run screen space reflections like on a higher setting because it transforms the way the water looks however on armor it just makes a very subtle difference as you can see here at the edge of the port it renders the containers uh, reflections a bit more accurately on the water so it does look nice but i don't have this one on personally next on the list we have contact shadows and what this does is it adds shadows for all the objects on the world all the railings the walls the fences uh, and it just adds a lot of depth to the world this is one i highly recommend having on i think it transforms the way the game looks you take a small fps hit of course but the difference is night and day Next up, we have another form of anti-aliasing. This is the hardware anti-aliasing setting. Uh, if you are running one or the other, uh, choose one, don't have them both on, but hardware anti-aliasing, as it says in the title, uses your hardware to render the anti-aliasing rather than in post-processing. On the higher settings, this does look really, really nice. However, it has a pretty big cost in FPS, so I don't use this personally. As I said earlier, I use the SMAA low setting on the post-processing just because it, it's, uh, it's a nice in-between. It gives me a, a decent amount of frame rate at the same time. This option with the hardware anti-aliasing does also come with a foliage smoothing setting where you can get the same effect on the grass and trees. Next setting, we have the model geographic detail, which like earlier, we had the uh, render distance for the model geography. This is the detail. So all the trees in the distance, uh, you can see that the higher the setting you go, the more detail they get rendered in at range. They have different stages of detail. So if you use like the zoom in, the focus effect, you'll see that you get a different, you get a different higher detailed model, but this just changes the ranges at which that occurs. 
I personally run this a medium to high setting because I think it gives a nice amount of detail and it gets rid of a lot of the popping when you're using the zoom in effect. Next up we got terrain surface and for this one we had to get nice and close to the ground because that's where the difference is made. You can see the parallax effects adds a lot more depth to the ground. Gives it like a separate layer of depth and raises up a lot of the grounds and, and gives it a lot of like unevenness. Doesn't make it just look so flat and the higher up settings just add shadows and higher definition textures to the to the ground. I thought I'd give a second scene of this just because you do spend a lot of time in Reforger taking cover and jumping prone. So I think the setting does make a nice difference. Uh, I tend to run just the parallax setting, just the basic level of depth. I think that's uh, more than enough to make a big difference and that's a very minor frame rate loss. Next up, we have texture detail. Uh, this one is does what it says on the tin. It's the detail of the textures. However, in the scene that I'm giving you here and most scenes that I was able to, to find, I couldn't really find any difference in texture detail. The only way, the only difference I've really found was from getting close to the floor. So as you can see here, close to the ground, you'll see there's a massive difference between the low, low and medium settings. And then from high and ultra, I don't see any difference to medium. So for that exact reason, I run my texture detail on medium. Texture filtering changes how the textures look uh, obscure angles and it ranges so I like to run this setting on the higher setting uh, and you'll notice the biggest differences where you pay attention to the roof slats here as they go off into the distance they start to blur out and sort of smooth into one texture however the higher you have the setting the more detailed it looks no matter what angle you look at the textures Next up we have shadow quality, which is pretty simple. It is the quality of the shadows, as you could have guessed. And I run this one on medium quality because I think the shadows look much better than the low setting. Uh, and on high, they don't really look that much better. So to save myself some FPS, I keep this on medium. Next up is distant shadows and a bit of a controversial one. I very much think they should remove the setting on PC to disable shadows. If you look at the tree line in the distance, you'll see there is a massive difference between none and low. And I believe consoles are forced to at least low. I've not seen any footage from PlayStation or Xbox where they haven't had any shadows like you can get on PC. So I do think they should remove the setting. I run my shadows on uh, my distant shadow setting on low because I don't really see a major difference between the rest of them and it does cost a bit of FPS to run on the higher settings. So I keep mine on low. Let me know if you guys agree in the comments. Do you think they should remove disabling shadows from the settings? Render target format is an odd one. I don't see any difference between the two settings. So I run it on low just to save FPS. I don't even know if it even costs FPS. So. This is a strange one. If anyone knows any details about this, please let me know in the comments. And finally, we have environment quality. This is another weird one uh, because I see no visual difference between low and high. However, there is a huge FPS gain by having on low. So if you check your settings and you have this on anything other than low, I highly recommend putting it down to low because if you can see any differences between the settings, please let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, it's a huge FPS cost for absolutely nothing. And here is my settings. I will go through the list here. Uh, I will leave my specs below in the description so you can see what kind of hardware I'm running on to, to have these settings. Obviously, everybody's gonna, everybody's PC is different. Everyone's going to require different settings. Everyone's going to have different wants. Some people want a better looking game. Some people want just pure FPS. But thank you guys very much for watching. If you learned something, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.